Hey, what's up guys? This is Matt Atkinson from MJ Real Estate. It's April 29th today. Uh, I just uh, wanted to share, I always like tips and different numbers. I want to share five tips. I talked to a friend of mine from college. I talked to. I have not talked to him since probably 2002, maybe 2003. And uh, he called me about refinancing about a month ago. And then he's interested in real estate investing. I offered him some classes to go to with the local clubs and stuff that I did. And then he called me today because he had some questions. And why I'm bringing this up is here's five things that uh, you need to learn what not to do or learn from him. Um, Obviously, if you're already buying a lot of properties, if you pick up one of these tips that you can implement immediately, that's really good. But here's five things with my conversation. In talking to him, he felt comfortable that I shared these with other people. I'm not going to say who his name is but he just bought a property this week. So here's tip number one. So he bought a property with two other investors, uh, another realtor who hasn't flipped any properties in the last two years, a money partner who's a family member and himself. And uh, the family member is the one that got the loan. And so my question was, is who are your partners? He told us and I said, okay, that's great. And then I said, how did you buy the property? And he's like, I bought it in my, the person's personal name. I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, well, how are you guys dividing up your responsibilities? It's like, well, we don't know yet, okay? So here's tip, this is a huge, this is like stupid tip. Have an operating agreement and an entity set up before you even in going into business with anyone else. So if you're gonna partner with other individuals, I know some investors who have only verbal stuff and the partnership has gone south and they're not able to get the money. So number one, make sure you have an operating agreement with an attorney to draft the documents so you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. So number number two, um, so he bought an auction from someone at, he bought a property at the auction at the Corny County Court Steps. That is one of the more aggressive ways to buy properties. He's never been inside the house. I'm like, you got a lot of huevos, okay? So why I'm bringing this up is he's like, well, we kind of knew about the property I said, how'd you know about the property? He's like, we knew about it two days before because it was going to foreclosure. I'm like, okay, so if you're gonna buy a property at the auction, give yourself a 10% buffer for more repairs if you guys take that down because you don't know what it's gone into unless you've done a short sell, Uh, unless you've been watching it as a short sell. The reason why I'm bringing this up is he has ballpark ideas. They've never done a flip before, two of the partners, one has. He needs to get bids in writing. So they just guessed what it cost and their guess, their est- their first estimate, they thought it'd be 66,000 and their first bid came in at 77,000. Okay, so that's really important to get bids in writing. The, the third thing is, is they're gonna start demol- they're gonna start renovating the property. I said, hey, did you get a home inspection? They're like, no, because we already bought the property. That's okay. Get a home inspection, pay 300 bucks, use it as a punch list, because it'll give you feedback of what other retail buyers are gonna be looking for for an inspection. It's a really good way to use a a checklist before for for and after so you can utilize that for buying properties. I bought a property about three months ago uh, that I bought seller financing, that I got an inspection, it helped me negotiate a price down with the seller even though it was seller financing and I got a $5,000, sorry, a $4,000 price reduction to benefit me, okay? It was only 300 bucks. So get a home inspection, determine who you're gonna use, it's gonna go look in the crawl space and also look in the attic. Why I'm bringing this up, a seller finance property I bought two and a half years ago has a bad, um, the, the subflooring's rotted from the tub. You couldn't have seen it. If I would have got an inspection two and a half years ago, I would have known this before. I just spent, a decent amount of money tearing out all the subflooring and putting the bathroom back together in four days, okay? So get an inspection, it's worth it. Number four, so so he's already closed and I asked him who he got a hard money loan with. I said, okay, how much did you put down? He's like, I put 20% down. I'm like, that's pretty normal. How much did you get charged? He's like, two points and 12% interest. I'm like, that's normal. And then I said, what is the extension fee? And he's like, oh. I think it's two points a month, okay? That's a lot of money. It's two points a month, and he verified it. So why I'm bringing this up is you need to read the documents before you sign so you know what you're getting into, especially if you're not familiar with it. I knew investors in 2006 and 2007 that would sign warranty deeds giving houses to other investors because they didn't read the documents, okay? 
So it's important to read your stuff and know what you're doing. So that's tip number four. It's confirm your hard money fees. You plan on an extension. Number five, so he's already got this property. I'm like, dude, get two more bids in writing. And here's how you qualify your contractors. Is if you have the time and you're comfortable, then take on a project that's not overwhelming. His bid for seventy-seven thousand. I'm not going to go consult with him to try to tell him to figure out how much it costs. I just gave him some good rules of thumb. But get two other bids. Uh, go to the local clubs to find out what other GCs are good to work with or other contractors. Make sure you're pulling permits on heavy remodels. That can take a deep, deep price. But if you're newer, get three bids on everything because you can get educated a lot on what type of repairs you should do also. And then here's the bonus one. So as I'm talking to him, he told me the numbers. His ARB is 200, excuse me, his ARB is 285, okay? He bought the property for 247. So there's a decent spread. So I said, okay, what do you think you can sell for? He's like, oh, we realistically can sell for 285. I'm like, okay, cool. So what are you gonna list it for? He's like, 400. I'm like, wait, if you really feel that you can sell it for 385, excuse me, why not list it for 385? If your project is that good, you want buyers to bump it up, okay? It's good that people bump it up. You don't wanna to have to do five, $10,000 reductions two or three times with the market really strong. So why I'm sharing that with you is if you price the property, proper, property aggressive up front and price it so you can have multiple offers within one to two weeks, move that inventory quick and then go on to the next project. So why I'm sharing that with you is as I was talking to this old college friend of mine, his numbers were his ARB was 285, excuse me, his ARB was 385. He brought the property for 247. He doesn't have an operating agreement between him and his two other partners, okay? He does not know what his rehab money was up front because he's never been in the property. He didn't get a home inspection. He also didn't know that his hard money fees are gonna cost him two points a month after six months. And then also, he's only gotten one bid and he didn't think, he's like, oh, I'll just get one other bid and call it good. No, get three bids, shop it around, find out who works well with what you got going on. And then most importantly, not most important, but price the proper property correctly. So why I'm bringing this up for MJ Real Estate is I got another email, this is today, I'm literally giving you real life stuff a newer investor who has 20 grand is trying to do three flips right now. I just think it's really important to don't over leverage yourself. If, you, if you're that investor, do one flip and wholesale the other two. If they're that good of deals, if you can make three to five grand, a quick three to five grand, use that capital to make sure you're not starving yourself. So with MJ Real Estate, we're looking forward to having you guys work with us more. We had an awesome phone call today. We cover 10 objections sellers have on seller finance properties. There's a lot that we can learn from each other and I look forward to having you guys participate more. This is a weekly wisdom tip for April 29th of 2015. Hope you guys have a great day. Okay, thanks.